Mike sees something he likes very much. He decides to go after it, and he finds what he wants. This form of transportation is becoming more and more popular all across America. It's neither bicycle nor motorcycle, but its European roots clearly point to both. It's the moped. The word is a combination of motor and pedal. The unique qualities of this hybrid vehicle and the consequences of the energy crunch point to an ever-increasing use of this form of transportation, especially for short trips. Most mopeds receive their power from a small two-stroke engine that puts out up to two horsepower and produces speeds from 20 to 30 miles an hour. Depending on the vehicle and terrain, the gas mileage ranges from 100 to 200 miles a gallon. Then, should one run out of gas, there is always the auxiliary energy in the pedaling power of a good pair of legs. The moped driver is faced with one serious problem. The car driving public isn't used to him. He will often find himself in a risky environment. He has to look out for his own safety. The precautions are all dictated by plain common sense. First, the machine must be kept in perfect mechanical condition. Second, in traffic, the word is drive defensively as in any vehicle. The person at the wheel of a car or truck may not always know you're there. Mike is shown how to perform a pre-ride safety check on his new moped. Most owner manuals contain such a checklist. The dealer will also furnish information on local moped traffic regulations on speed limits, license and registration requirements. In some states, insurance coverage is needed. Mike also learns that all mopeds comply with the safety standards specified by the U.S. government. The checking procedure should be carried out on a regular basis according to the owner's manual. Mike examines both brake levers for smooth operation. He makes sure that the cables leading to the brake drums are well lubricated. The lining and its proper action can be examined through these inspection holes. The throttle has to turn smoothly and return to the start position when released. While in motion, this action will make the transmission automatically shift to neutral. All mopeds have automatic transmissions. Mike checks the on off and reserve switch on the fuel tank. Normally there is enough gas in the reserve tank to reach a service station. The gas supply can be checked visually. Most mopeds require pre-mixing. Oil is added to the gas for lubrication of the engine. A few models feature oil injection. The owner's manual will show the correct tire pressure. On spoke wheels, the tightness of the spokes is determined by tapping them. They give an even high-pitched sound. A loose spoke will cause a dull clink. Most mopeds have drive chains. They must be adjusted to the right tension and be properly lubricated. Some mopeds run on drive belts. The loss of tension caused by wear has to be corrected. After driving, mud and dirt must be removed from the drive chains or belts. The pedals, equipped with reflectors, must turn freely. The rearview mirror has to be adjusted for the driver. It is an essential safety tool. In order to check the lights, Mike has to start the motor. The electric power comes from a generator, a magneto. Only turn signals are powered by a battery. The head and taillights are checked. 
Mike's safety will depend on them after dark. Turn signals are helpful. In some situations, it is difficult to break and give hand signals at the same time. Make sure the horn functions properly. The kill switch should stop the motor immediately. It's a good idea to carry a spare parts kit, which should contain some tools, a spark plug, spare bulbs, and a quantity of oil for pre-mixing. Good locks and a solid chain should be used when the moped is parked in a public and unsecured place to prevent disappearing acts. The dealer is present when Mike and two other moped drivers make their first trial run. This is the time to put on the safety helmets, even though some people object. In a few states, they are required by law. Eye protection is recommended for street driving. Dust or insects can get into the eyes. Suddenly impaired vision can cause accidents. The seat and handlebars should feel comfortable. Adjustments can be made to suit individual needs. Mike and the other two novice moped drivers start and shut down the motor a few times. As the instructor suggests, they try to start slowly and brake smoothly. The rear brake should be applied first, however both brakes play a role in efficient stopping. After a few tries, they get the feel for it. The students try for a few emergency stops. The time to learn is now. A few slow turns. Mike, like most other people, has graduated from the bicycle. He understands how to shift his weight into the turn. Mike tries out man-made horsepower. He notes that the gearing is different from a bicycle. Also, he has to propel the moped, which is at least twice as heavy. But pedaling is good for your health, and it can be of help to the engine when going up a steep hill. Mike intends to pedal some distance a couple of times a week to strengthen his legs. The dealer tells the group to practice some more until they feel comfortable and confident. Then they are ready to drive in traffic. Local regulations permit the use of mopeds on most surface roads. Freeways, expressways or turnpikes are always excluded. So is driving on sidewalks. Avoid fast high density traffic. The mental computer of many car drivers is as yet not programmed to mopeds. The most important thing is to keep yourself visible. Leave the lights on even during the day. Wear brightly colored clothing and reflective tape on headgear. Moped visibility is important in daylight and even more so at night. Head and tail lights will protect the driver. Reflectors will make him even more visible. Wear clothing with reflective stripes. Turn signals are especially important at night. In the city, mopeds will often move with the traffic. Mike follows the wheel path of the car ahead and drives somewhat to the right of center. It makes him well visible. Oil drips from cars tend to accumulate in the center of traffic lanes and could cause a skid. Keep a distance from the vehicle ahead of you. Distance is your best brake. 
If the car behind seems to crowd you, just let it pass. Learn to give in. Turn signals should be given clearly and well in advance of change of direction. Give stop signals way in advance of the intended stop. Directional lights are advisable. The driver can keep both hands on the brakes. Also, when changing lanes or turning, don't completely rely on your rear view mirror. There is a blind spot. Move your head for a quick look to make sure all is clear. When traffic makes it necessary to drive close to parked cars, watch for suddenly opening car doors. Be ready to stop. Assist your motor by pedaling when making a left turn in a dense traffic situation. Railroad crossings, for obvious reasons, should be approached at about a 90 degree angle. Mike keeps his eyes open for moped hazards such as storm drains, drainage grates, and potholes. In order to avoid glass and other obstacles, Mike never drives too close to the curb. On wet roads, slow down. Avoid sudden turns or quick braking. The slick surface could cause a spill. The same precautions have to be taken in rainy weather. And speaking of weather, when it's cold, wear protective clothing, especially gloves, to keep your hands warm and nimble. Mike never drives between cars. One of them may not see or hear him. One needs both hands for driving a moped. Never carry anything in your hands. Package carriers are available for this purpose. Make sure not to cover the taillight. Sorry, no room for a passenger, unless you have one of the few mopeds equipped for a second rider. Groups of moped drivers should ride in single file. Driving abreast invites accidents. Gasoline is an energy power package that has to be treated with respect. A gallon of gas, which can propel a moped for over a hundred miles, can kill and destroy if not used properly. Never clean your moped with gasoline. Inside a garage or house, its fumes can cling to the ground where they may find a pilot light or other ignition source. Safe cleaning materials are available. It didn't take Mike very long to become an expert moped driver. He really got what he wanted.